All right. Last but not least, in our tour of Onyx for the Vista user, we have the editor. Now, this is the one place where I would argue that Onyx and Vista are definitely the most different. And in fact, it's not that Onyx and Vista are the most different. It's just that Vista is different. Um, let's put it out there. <laughs> no, seriously, though. And this is one of those features that Vista has always done differently from pretty much every other lighting console or software on the market. And it's not wrong how they do it. It's just backwards and upside down from a lot of the major lighting consoles, okay? Because somebody's going to comment below and be like, hey, this console doesn't. I'll be like, okay, whatever. But regardless, you know, most of the consoles we see here in the U.S., don't work the way Vista works with Q editing. That doesn't mean you have to be scared of it, doesn't mean you have to be afraid. It's just gonna be a few new habits and you'll be ready to rock and roll. The biggest difference is that Vista, from its core, from day one, because I remember way back when it came out and it was so cool and different is that you basically open these cue lists and you're making changes and stuff and that stuff kind of just changes or gets saved automatically because you open that cue okay which is a lot like how computers work but it's not how lighting consoles work and so it's it's fine but eh whatever it's it's totally fine but you know the positive of it is it's a little bit more like you're used to working with a computer but the negative is if you do open a queue for editing or you're working on editing a queue but then you decide you want to store it somewhere else or store parts of things somewhere else in order to make your event the best it can be then you can't really do that in the way vista structured and and so it feels a little more user friendly but I can tell you there's definite situations that you'll run into in lighting where it's going to be a wall that you hit that you can't get across, whereas the way Onyx works gives you a little more flexibility. In Onyx, in our default views, there are a couple that are pretty helpful. So the first is Qlist values. This is just one where for the selected Qlist, I want the white box around it and it's written at the top here, you can click through each queue. You can see which queue is active. And you can see the other cues. You can see everything that's stored in them. Truth be told, you don't really have to look at this that much. So the first way to edit cues is to not look at these at all. So the first way is just to grab some lights, tell them to do something, right? And then hit the update key. Okay, now you do have to be careful with update, but generally it works really well. Update is going to show you any cues. So this is the cue list name and the cue name that these lights at these parameters, so lights 201 through 205 in color right now, it shows me, hey, this is the queue that's active, that's been played the latest, that has these parameters. There may be other queues that show up underneath that weren't the latest played queue, but are playing that also have those parameters. And so the biggest thing here is if you're updating a queue, just make sure you've got the right one selected in red that you want to update at the time, okay? And then updating a queue is really just as simple as pressing enter. And then Onyx is a couple really cool things here, which is awesome in a live event. The first is it just goes ahead, it updates that queue. It then plays it again so that the changes are being played in the queues because we already had them out on the stage. And then it clears the program. It does all three of those in one so that you can be mid event, no matter what your event is, change things, save it so you have it again there for later in that queue, but then not have a bunch of stuff in your programmer that you now have to worry about clearing smoothly if you've maybe moved on to another look by the time you remember to clear. So that's the huge benefit of the update function. But there are other ways to work as well. For example, I can, with the selected queue list, press edit, queue, and then we're in queue two, so I'll just hit queue two. Okay, edit queue two, enter. Now, in our programmer, we have, it says edit queue, and it says, uh, and it has the info about that queue, right? Now I can just go, I'll just go over here in the visualizer and move all the lights again, right? And now we've moved them. We saw them moving here in Onyx, right? We saw the values moving, everything's moving. And now we can press update. Boom. That updates only that specific queue. Uh, one of the benefits of this is that we can actually add things in. So if I go back to that, for example, edit, two edit sorry q2 
enter. We get that up, and you know we've got fixtures 101 through 110, 201 through 210 in the, in this. But if I want to add something that I hadn't even used at all before, like these front lights, I can go ahead, give them some intensity right here, and then I can update that in the queue. Um, the update function wouldn't pick up on that. However, the update function will, there is a key here, is that even if I go to add in a new fixture like 304 here, and I give it a color, and I turn it on, Oh, but I'm in the part fixture. Um, so I give it a color. Yeah, I'm in the part fixture, not the main fixture. So it's not going to give me intensity control uh, unless I go to the first part, which I don't have a group for. Oh, no, I only have the parts right now uh, because that's the icon in the 2D plane that I'm working with. No worries there. I can then go and just update. And it's going to tell me right here, unassigned values will be merged into Qless 5 Q2. So that all that means is that there's stuff that I brought into the programmer. It doesn't, there isn't any queue that's currently active that has that stuff. So it doesn't know where to put it, but it's going to put it in the active queue, the one that's playing, of the selected queue list, the one with the white box around it. So press enter. The stuff gets added anyways. We're good to go. All right. If we want to add new queues, we've done this a few times already within a playlist, then we could just go hit record queue, press the number, enter. We can do point queues of all sorts. Enter those in there as needed. The QS values window does give us some stuff we can do uh, in terms of manipulating and working with those cues. So, for example, if we pop it into edit mode, that allows you to, to basically work with this spreadsheet. I can then change fade times at will, right? Set f delay times, that's for the whole queue. And I can do this with splits too. So if I want it to fade in at one second, but fade out at five, I just type one slash five, enter. We also have abilities to change the name. So we can call this, you know, like doors, whatever. We can call this announcements. If I could spell that, I didn't spell that well. And then we have the ability to change the triggering as well. So does it go, does it go when you press the go button? Does it wait or does it follow? The difference between wait and follow is whether the queue plays back first or whether it's it's following after the queue started okay and i always mix this up in my head which one is which um it should be that wait is waiting a number of seconds after the previous queue starts its fade whereas follow is after it ends its fade okay i mix that up too much same with delay we also have the fade mode which just allows you um to basically take things like color wheels and gobo wheels that typically would snap between different settings and you can set them to fade. You can set all the channels to fade and so that they move a little more slowly and precisely and quietly. Again, that's something I rarely use, but it's occasional. You can also set a path for the fade. So there's actually different paths in here and they have pictures which just allow you to kind of soften the fade or have it be a little different. Again, these are fairly nuanced and, you know, 90% of the time, if not more, you're just going to leave it in the default. Other than that, that's pretty much everything you're going to see in edit mode. You can copy cues if you want. So, for example, if I want to take one and a half and put it as three, I could just say copy Q 1.5 at three, enter. Boom, we got a nice copy of that queue, which is now independently editable, um, but it's copied right over there, nice and easy. Other than that, you can delete queues just like Vista. Delete, say I type in Q3, enter, boom, Q3 goes away. It replays the queue list, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Other than that, I think it's pretty much all you need to know about editing queues. It's pretty simple and honestly, not all that different from Vista once you get into it. Sure, the overall concept is different, but when you get into the weeds, it's working with lights at the end of the day. And a lot of these things are going to be similar, be really common. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this series where we went through and mirrored the Vista basic training tutorials with some for Onyx. I just want to show you as a Vista user the way that you can learn how to use Onyx even if you're in Vista. Um, we love Vista at Learn Stage Lighting Gear and though we can pretty much sell any console or software we want, we really do a lot with Onyx because it's a really exceptional platform both in terms of what you can do but also the price point and that's one place where we just 
don't love Vista. It's just very expensive to get into. And especially with it being popular in churches, you want to get the most out of your money possible. And so we hope you learned from these tutorials how Onyx isn't that hard and you can get started with it and really get going and start creating some great stuff for your church or your event agency or whatever kind of work you do and save yourself a bunch of money. Not only that, but when you need to move to Onyx and you need Onyx gear, we're in Stage Lighting Gear is your place for that and everything else. So check it out. Check our stuff out. Request a quote. We would love to help you either with more lights. Even if you're staying with Vista, we won't be mad at you. I mean, not too bad. But if you want to switch over to Onyx and get some Onyx hardware, expand your system, get lighting, we help tons of people every day. We love to answer your questions, give you personalized pricing through a quote, and we'd love to help you out. Not only that, but there's Learning Stage Lighting Labs also linked below. We bundle that in with, with uh, purchases of gear so you can get help there. Um, and it, it's a place where we can help you. There's tons of video tutorials on this and so much else, and we'd love to help you out. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day. See ya.